Welcome back to the third video of IS 37 Provisions, Contingent Liabilities and Contingent Assets. The lecture structure for this video will be the measurements and other things for provisions and future operating losses. Then looking at the measurement of the um, provision, remember we told you a best estimate needs to be made about the amount but how do you measure this amount or how do you calculate this amount? Then it tells you it will be the best estimate of the expenditure, expenditure required to settle the present obligations at the end of the reporting period. If there is a large population, you weigh all the possible outcomes. If each amount is just as likely, you use a midpoint. And remember, always use amounts before tax. Then, risk and uncertainties must be taken into account. Uncertainty does not justify creating excessive provisions and care should be taken that liabilities and expenses are not understated but assets and income are not overstated. Remember due diligence. And remember in measurement there is risk and uncertainties because you do not know what the amount is so you need to take it into account. But just because there are risk and uncertainties, it does not justify creating excessive provisions. Then, present value must be used if time value of money is material. When is it material? When it is longer than one year. And remember, you always use a pre-discount rate that reflects the risk specific to the liability. So remember, for measurement, you present value the amount if time value of money is material, when is it material, if it's longer than one year. Remember, for example, in I-16, where you had a um, dismantling cost that you capitalized to the asset, you present valued it because the estimated life of your asset was, for example, five years. So you dismantle it after five years. And I-37 tells you that you need to present value it if time value of money is material and it is material because it is longer than one year and on that note remember the dismantling cost that you did in the IS 16 lectures that amount was determined in terms of IS 37 so if we ask you to discuss dismantling cost in terms of IS 37 you need to discuss these components of what is a provision, what is the recognition criteria and the measurement thereof. Then future events that affect obligations are taken into account if there is a sufficient objective evidence, for example, new technology at the time when the obligation is settled in the future may result in actual expenditure being reduced. And then Gains from expected disposals of assets are not taken into account. That just means when you have a provision, you take into account future events, for example, new technology um, being that your actual expenditures may be reduced. Therefore, you take it into account when you determine the measurement of the provision. And then there can be changes in provisions. For example, uh, um, you need to review a provision at the end of each reporting period. Remember, it's an estimate. Therefore, at the end of each reporting period, you need to review the provision that you made. And you need to adjust to reflect your new best estimate. And if the outcome of the economic benefits are not probable, reverse the provision. Because remember, a provision says that it is probable that it will lead to an outflow of economic benefit. So if it's not probable anymore, it is not a revision anymore. And you need to reverse the provision. And if this kind of provision to present value, you need to increase it each year with the finance cost. Remember, when you change a provision to show the adjustment to, to the best new estimate, it's not a mistake because initially you made a reliable estimate of what the amount needs to be. So it can change because you get new information available to you. Then the use of provisions can only be used for expenditures for which it was created. So it means you can only recognize the provision 
against the expense or asset that it was used for. And then now we are at future operating losses and we tell you we never recognize future operating losses. Why do we not recognize this? Because the entity can change its operations and not incur those losses and there is no past event. Therefore, the definition of liability of provisions are not met because you have not yet had, future, uh, had operating losses. It's only that you expect it in the future. And, but it can be, future operating losses can be an indication of IS-36 in payment for certain assets. Then you can also have reimbursements where some or all of amounts used to settle obligations is reimbursed by another party. That means when you're being sued by a company, you can have another company saying, if you lose the case, we will reimburse you. This means that the effect thereof is you recognize reimbursement asset and income if it's virtually, virtually certain to be received. So if you lost the case and now you are sure you're going to receive the money, the company said that, that they will pay you, then you recognize a reimbursement asset. And this amount may not exceed the provision amount and it is treated as a separate asset and not offset against the provision in the SFP and the offset uh, can offset the provision expense and reimburse of income in the statement of, chain, uh, statement of profit or loss. So, for example, if you are being sued by a company and you know you and it's probable that you will lose the case, you need to recognize a provision. But if another company comes to you and they say that they will reimburse you and you are first virtually certain that they will reimburse you, you recognize a reimbursement asset in your SFP. In your SFP, you will therefore have a line item provision in the liability section and a reimbursement asset in the asset section, you will not offset these two amounts in the SFP. You will disclose it separately, but the expense can be offset in the statements of profit or loss or other comprehensive income. And then remember, um, there's also a disclosure, you need to disclose it. What do you need to disclose? For each class of provisions, you need to disclose the following. And, just as a side note, comparative amounts are not required. This is the one standard where comparative amounts are not required. Therefore, you show an opening balance, the cost in goods in during the year, for example, a cost that you've paid, and then any unused amounts that needs to be reversed and additional provisions made during the year and the finance cost capitalized that gives you the closing balance. And then remember, this is just the amounts, but we also need descriptives. The descriptives is you need to disclose the nature of the obligation, the expected timing of the out outflow, uncertainties about the amount or timing of the outflows, future events that were taken into account um, for recognizing the provision for the amount and if there is a reimbursement asset. And now we are done with provisions and on that there is a summary of a what is a provision. What is a provision? A provision is a liability of uncertainty about the timing or amount and provision shall be recognized when an entity has a present obligation as a result of a past event and it is probable that an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation and a re reliable estimate can be made of the amount of the obligations. So when we give you a question and we say and we ask you to discuss whether this can be recognized in the provision in terms of IS 37. These are the keywords in the scenario that you need to look out for. That is left out of the summary that I have filled in for you and that you need to apply to the summary or the question. The question that you need to apply to the question. So remember this summary is very important because it shows you the keywords. But 
Always remember, provision is a liability of uncertainty about around timing and or amounts.